do not own the rights to this music. Hey mommy, Google, you mommy, can stop. Mommy, mommy, mommy. You said in your word, um, I jumped right in because God is just, He's so good. Um, you spoke in your word, Matthew 5 44. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. And for he makes his son rise on the evil and on and on the good. He makes his son rise the sun in the sky and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Either way, equality, unity, the love that God has for us, his children, the sheep. And then God took me to, this is a prophetic message today, but I'm just coming in with prayer, worship, and praise in the Lord. And I'm just coming in with his word. Nothing can be added to God's words. Nothing can be taken away from God's words. I bow down to God. I bow below. I bow beneath you. I come I come and approach your throne. Father God, I pray for and ask for we have grace and mercy. May grace and mercy be upon this channel, this ministry. I, I ask for your protection. Father God, may we be under your shadow. Father God, may we dwell in your presence. May we dwell. May you dwell with us. Father God, may you dwell in this atmosphere. May you come and take over this space, this atmosphere. May you deliver this message to whom it is for father god you sent your vessel you sent me here to deliver this word father god this is not a word of pleasing this is not a word for the flesh this is not a word that can tickle your fancy but this is a word of truth this is a word of honesty this is a word of what the lord has placed in me to set you free to to um to, to help you to help you be delivered to be to use what god is giving you and use the wisdom and knowledge of what you hear and how to use it appropriately of what you hear, what you hear. Don't let it be just a, wor a word you, you, you hear, but you don't have the ears to hear that you are not moving in action. You, you're just a listening ear because then you become just a monitoring spirit. Then you just become... Um, it just be, it's not wise. You become foolish. So then God took me to, um, after that in Matthew, guess what? I want to say the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is Matthew, um, Matthew six, nine. I just came across it and I just feel led to add this to this message today. 
In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We need our daily bread. We need your word daily. We can't move without you. We can't go to the next step without you, without your instructions, Lord God, those that are in Christ, because those that are not in Christ, they're moved according to their flesh, according to what their heart tell them, according to what man tells them, according to what pleases them what they according to what looks um edifying to to them what looks pleasing again to their flesh cuz we need we need your daily bread for everything we don't do this for us but we do this to glorify you to bring to bring and to win souls back to you it's not it, the glory the gl your glory shines on us but it is not us that gets the glory. It is you, Father God. This is not a me thing, but this is a we. This is a unity thing. It's not about us. We know that you are our provider. You know, We know that you will give us the provision. We know that you are the redeemer of the souls. It is, it is through you, the Holy Spirit, that lives within us, that uses us, those that who were called, those that were predestined, those that deny themselves, those that give up their plans and their will for you to be used to help others. Although we need help ourselves, although we need healing ourselves and deliverance ourselves, but we come to you and we ask you, Lord God, we seek you. You said, ask, seek and knock. And that door will be open. You just gave me that word um, just recently this week. God said, he, he said, he gave me a number. Perfecting this probably on this phone I'm using now. Ask, seek, knock, and the door will be open. It will be open. You ask. He said, call unto him. Co go to God, not man. God said not to be man-pleasing. Not to be man-pleasing. Those that... Those that look on the outer appearance, but don't judge righteously, but judge what they see on the outer, judge what they, you know, but they're not, they're not testing their spirit. They're not judging by the spirit. They're not testing the spirit. Give us this day our daily bit bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, Lord God, but deliver us from the evil ones. Deliver us from the wicked, Lord. And if the evil and the wicked dwells in us, deliver us, Lord God. Search our heart, purify our heart, cleanse us, remove it, take it out of us. It should show. It should show after the deliverance has happened, after the healing process has happened, we should be able to walk it out and it should show. It should show whether we have a church building or whether you are being, we are being used because we have a small church in our homes right here on this camera. It should show. Forgive us, Father. We repent today. We repent. For taking matters in our own hand. We repent for going before you. We repent for we repent for for um for using our churches and our platforms for our own good, for selfish ways, for money. And things that you have not called us to. We repent for doing that. For those such things, take it away from us, Father God. If it is not of you, shine your light on those things that are not of you. And Father God, those things that are protected for us, Lord God, cover it. Psalms 91, protection over the over the viewers, Father God, over your children that views this channel, that is in, in tune with this channel, our children, our family, our spouses, us. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over myself in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover myself in Psalms 91 with the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover my air gates, my eyes, my mouth, my nose. And same for the viewers, Father God, your children, the righteous. Like we said, we pray for our enemies that spitefully use us, that come up against us. We love them no matter what. 
We love them. We pray for those which despitefully use us and to forgive them. So that we are not overlooked. Help us to be of good cheer. Help us to be a good, of good counsel to those we are ministering to, be an evangelist to, however you have sent us out in the name of Jesus. But this word, I just had to open up with praise and worship and to glorify the Lord at all times. Um, I thank you all for tuning in here at Prophetic Healing Ministry. God has brought about a word for this channel today. Um, he has brought about a message. This is not a pleasing word. This is not, um, this is a harsh word. It's not, you know, but it's, this is a word of deliverance. This is a word that will set you free. This is a word that will help you to move to the next step. This is a word that will show you and reveal to you what you need to do next. This is a kingdom marriage word. This is a word that God has given me. Um, this is two messages, two prophetic dreams. Take it back to God. Do not take this word and run with it. Do not, um, what is it? Do not connect yourself with this word if it is not up for you. If God has not, this is an answer for somebody. This is an answer prayer. This is an answer prayer. 611. God has been highlighting the number 611, the prophetic number, and the meaning of that is answer. God is wanting either for you to answer the call for your God-ordained marriage, for you to answer the call for your God-ordained husband. He's calling. He's trying to reach you. So that's two things. Answer the call for God on your life, for your family, for your kingdom spouse. Kingdom husband for your children, for yourself, answer the call. Two, answer the call. Like literally answer the call for your spouse. Answer the call. When he calls, when he reaches out, answer him. Answer him. Thirdly, um, answer the call to intercede and pray for your God ordained husband. The God ordained husband is in need of prayer. Who this is for, you will know. So the the men of God that why that is is called to be kingdom husbands and has a calling on their life, but they just can't seem to get it right to come to God and seek God and bow down. These these men, um, death is taking place. This could be a spiritual death. This could be a physical death. But what I seen in the room of the spirit was a woman. I seen shadow. So I don't know who you are, but you were your your king your spouse was sitting in a chair. Their backs their back was turned. It's like they were sitting at a desk, and you were rubbing your spouse back, like you were rubbing their back. You know, and what I heard was. Um, your spouse is dead. Your kingdom spouse is dead. I said, and I said, and this isn't a dream. And I'm, and I'm saying, how could this person's spouse be dead? If you gave them this promise, if you gave them this promise and this is who you chose for them, how could their spouse be dead? And they didn't even get married yet. And what God said is either us, this is a spiritual death. Or, or you have not, you fail to follow God's instructions and obey God to continue to stand for this man and now he's dead. Take it back to God. I only prophesy in part. So this is only part of your answer. This is one dream. So he's dead. He needs prayer. And God is calling you. And telling you and trying to get your attention to intercede and pray for your God ordained husband. I don't care what your friend, your neighbor, another prophet has told you, lied to you, deceived you, or the enemy is deceiving you to walk away. But this man needs your help. He needs his help me. 
He needs his rib. You were formed from this man rib. You were called to stand for this man. And you are being disobedient. And now the blood is on your hand. This is a prophetic warning for whom this is for. I have no idea. God did you use a name. I don't know if this is in relation to Eugene. I don't know a Eugene. I don't think I know a Eugene. In, in my midst, you know, like maybe in my presence around. But whoever Eugene is, cover that person. Whoever Eugene is, you're connected to a Eugene. This may not be in relation to the man that God said, this, this husband died. This kingdom husband died. And of course, I rebuked, I canceled. I came up against this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But it is your assignment. It is your portion to do the rest and to do the work. You will not have a fulfillment of a kingdom marriage if you are not putting in the work with God. You are not fasting and you are not praying. And you are not obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit. Where you are being distracted by things of this world. And I'm going to get to that. God said in Mark, um, Mark seven, Jesus said to put aside, put away. Okay. The things of this world, people pleasing that you rather do what the world is telling you to do. You rather do what a woman is telling you to do. A Jezebel is telling you to do. You rather do what the counterfeit is telling you to do. What your mother and dad is telling you to do. You rather go follow what the world is doing to be a pleasing man of the world. He's saying a pleasing man. That means the people. It says God's commands. You put aside God's commands and obey human teachings so you you put aside what the lord has told you to do even concerning your marriage or whatever it is to follow the teachings of humans to follow the teaching of lo lowercase gods so you please the flesh and you were disobedient to god so that was in one translation. I'm not sure what translation that came from. But this translation, Mark, is from King James, which is Mark 7, 8. And it reads, for laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. So you rather do the tradition of men, the world. The washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. That is what you do. And it says he answered and said to them in verse 6, going back up to verse 6. It says, well, did Isaiah prophesy of, of you hypocrites as it is written? This people honors me. Yeah, this people honors me with their lips. So you honor God and you say all these things. You curse God, the people around you, with their lips. But their hearts is far from me. So your heart is really far from you. you, you you're you, not in it to win. So you're not really in it for the love of Christ and for the love of your neighbors, your brothers and sisters. Because your spouse is your brother. Your spouse is your friend, your best friend. Your heart is far from me, he says. And in vain they worship. And in vain they worship me. In vain. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So you're just false all around. So that is in what I'm reading out of the New King James Version. The other one was in another trans translation. I'm not sure of what. So the second dream was um, this dream, and, and I wanted to um, bring about that this these dreams happened last week. We are, this is Monday. I'm not sure when this message will be delivered. However, the Lord, how swiftly and quickly the Lord needs this to be uploaded. It's on God's terms. 
and on God's timing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we just thank him for this. And I'm thankful to be used for a vessel to help one of my sisters in Christ on whom this is for. Because this is very, 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 very important. And the second one was, um, oh, this, this dream, it was a guy. And this guy, the way God, this might not be your exact husband, but maybe your husband has some type of similarities to this person in this dream. I cannot remember this person's name. They were on, um, what's the, the show on Netflix? The marriage show. It's like a marriage show. We know that this this is not like of God. It is not like the the way that God put marriages together. It has some qualities because there are some people that don't even know who their spouses are. So it's the love is love is blind. So by me explaining that part, it just brought back came back to my remembrance. Love is blind. We know the way they do things is not godly but being behind the wall and meeting only on avoid and meeting your spouse only by you don't see what they're look on their outer appearance so some of you don't know who your spouse is the outer appearance right so this man is a man that wears glasses and he's tall but this man has blood on his um bottom because I don't want to say the word. So on the bottom of this man boxers, there was blood. And what, as me being the viewer in this dream, this is a deep, deep sleep dream. God has just been, it's God has so much that he's downloads that I can't even seem to write it down fast enough because it's so much. But I know when it's something important and it's something God, he 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 will keep he won't let you rest until you deliver it until you speak it out it has to come out it has to come forth so this man he's going to confess what he has done i don't know if this is a brand new relationship or this is a man you have been you know standing for you already have encountered with him in the past and y'all are maybe in a separation but the way it looks you were sitting like in front of him how it appeared in this dream what did they do what did y'all do he appeared they made a, a mess they made a mess they pulled out everything <laughs> with their toys so you were sitting in front of him and he was facing where the way that I can see him sitting in a chair. And y'all could have even been at, in a kitchen counter. It just reminded me of like a kitchen counter. And y'all was sitting there and he confessed. He's dirty. He's unclean down there. Because he has, he, he named about three women that he had sexual intercourse with. Forgive me, God. This ministry, you know, for using those words if they are not appropriate for the channel, but I must speak it the way I seen it and the way God showed me and the way, you know, he's unclean. There has been three women. So he's going to confess and God wants you to forgive him. Do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. This must be an answer prayer. Maybe this has been, you had been asking God, you need revelation. You need confirmation on what your spouse has been doing, what he has been up to, if he is clean. And he, he's going to tell the truth. He's confessing the truth. That it, it was three women. It is three women. God didn't say this man has a disease or anything like that. Of course, he needs to get tested. But it was blood. And that blood is symbolized unclean. Not the blood of Jesus. Because God would have God would have announced that he would have said that he would have made that clear to me. So cover your kingdom husband. Every part of your kingdom husband. Cover your marriage, your marital bed. And of course, these were Jezebels and counterfeits. Because he's confessing to you that he has sinned. He has, you know, fornicated. Um, lust, perversion, temptation, all kind of things has taken place. And if did and if this did not take place, this is a warning to intercede and to cancel the Jezebel spirit, the 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 spirit of bow, the lustful spirit, the, the spirit of temptation, 
the spirit of perversion or the spirit of addiction, sexual addiction that your spouse may have. This is your confirmation to help you. You are a help me. You are your spouse's rib. And that is your answer. That is your answer. I don't know what the title of this message is going to be, but nothing missing, nothing lacking from our prayers, from our life, from our marriages, nothing missing or lacking from our kingdom spouses. They are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. You are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The God says the weapons may form, but they will not prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail against your marriage, against your ministry, against your calling, your assignment, your family. The gates of hell will not prevail against us this day. And I pray that your marriage promise come to pass. And I pray that you have a, a heart of forgiveness and a soft heart that you have patience. Because God says, where I have it written, love is patient, love is kind. God of the hills and the valleys, love is patient, love is kind. And the patience that you have. For your spouse to come and to speak to you, to have the comfort and the safe place to come speak to you. The patience for your husband to come back to God, to get himself together. That is a big step of honesty. If a man can come to you and sit with you and tell you the truth, a safe place, peaceful place. Love is patient. Love is kind. Thank you, Father God. You're the God of hills and the valleys. You love us. Thank you for this message. That is all I'm going to go. I'm going to end it here until next time. You know, when God lays it on my heart, he, it's so much he lays on my heart. But if you are in need of prayer, one-on-one -on -one counsel, and the Lord leads you, please email me if you have any questions. Even this concern, if, you, if, if, if this, you know, troubled you, and you need prayer and you need counsel and you need, um, what is it? A one-on-one -on -one where you, a safe place, um, you know, you are safe here where you can book a one-on-one -on -one with me. You can just email me and we will set you up and we will pray and I will help you. In this, I will help you in this for this. God has given me the wisdom and knowledge. He has placed his spirit in me to help in this in this area. So, um, and I understand. I understand. So, um, I pray that this encourages you. I pray that this helps you. I pray that this is edifying. Please leave leave, leave a message, a comment. Do not put your business on these platforms. Do not put your personal business on these platforms, but email me privately. Um, you do not want your business broadcast in the comments because there are monitoring spirits here. There are witches, warlocks. There are haters and jealous people that do not want your marriage to come to pass. You, the devil, Satan, does not want these marriages to come to pass. These are kingdom of God marriages and he hates unity. He hates unification, if that's a word. So, but you are protected. Your marriages are protected by God. What he put together, no one can separate. No one can break it apart. It's a three-strand core. It's God. It's a triangle. It's God, your kingdom husband, and you. It's a triangle. And it leads right back to God. Everything leads back to God. God is in the center of it all. Keep him in the center. Stay connected. Stay joined with God. Stay close to God. Stay close to the Holy Spirit. I even I um left a, a message in the um community today. And that is even in relation to softening the heart. God has laid it on my heart yesterday. Soften your heart. Hearts are hardened. Um, but soften them, forgive, worship, stay in worship, stay in praise and stay in your word. F be filled with the Holy Spirit Th so that you have that patience, that kindness, that love, that you are not boastful about anything, that you are not prideful. You are humble. Stay at God's feet. You are humble. You are humble. You are humble. You walk in humility. You are not here 
to take God for granted and his gifts for granted and your spouse for granted. They are a reward. We are grateful for God. Your spouse is a reward. He's a gift. You are a reward. You are a gift to cherish God, to cherish your spouse, your family, your children. With the love of God, be blessed everyone until next time.